In your Bible, Ezekiel 22, we'll read one verse here, verse number 26, or verse, uh, yeah, verse 26, Ezekiel 22, verse 26, and, um, you know, just thinking about this time of year, there's a lot of, uh, like, like Brother Joel mentioned, you'll go somewhere and people ask your kid, you know, what are your kids going to dress up like for Halloween, you probably have that experience, uh, you know, you, you probably don't need to tell them that's a devil's holiday. You, you know, you're going to hell if you, sac- if you practice it. That's not the response you need to have. Um, but the question when it comes to the things that we face in our society and in our culture, how do you respond to these things? How are you supposed to respond to these kinds of things where evil is celebrated and death is exalted? How are you supposed to respond to that? And as a Bible-believing Christian, not just, you know, as a, let me go a step step further, as a (laughs) Bible-reading, Bible-practicing Christian, how are you supposed to respond to it? Um, Ezekiel 22, verse 26, I want to start here, and we'll go to Ephesians 5 after this. I want to start here because in Ezekiel chapter 22, um, the Lord is dealing with His people, and he's, uh, he's really chiding them, he's rebuking them for the positions that they've taken against him. And if you would look at verse number 26, it says, Her priests, the priests of Israel, her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among them. Notice he says there that they've put no difference between the holy and the profane. Go to Ephesians chapter number 5. One of the problems that our, I think it's our society in general. It's not just Christians, but unfortunately, too many Christians are a byproduct of the society in which we live. Instead of making it the other way around. Um... And one of the biggest issues that we have is we can't discern what's right and what's wrong. I mean, 50 years ago, most churches would say, this is not something that we want to be a part of. This is not something that's right to celebrate. And, and now it's sort of like, well, you lose your thing, I'll do mine. It's, just sort of, it's no big deal. And um, I, I think the Lord has a problem with that. I think it's sort of an epidemic. It really shows where we're at today as a church. As Christian people, nobody wants to draw lines in the sand anymore. No one wants to say, here's the line, and don't cross it. Uh, nobody wants to, everybody wants to sort of just keep everything neutral, and God doesn't want it that way. God wants a clear line. He had a problem with his priests, because the priests didn't want to show what was holy and what was profane. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm going to just get this out of the way, Halloween's profane. There's no reason why Christians should celebrate it. Now, I will go on a step further, and I would, I would say this. Most Christians, when you push comes to shove, if you ask them, well, why don't you do it? They'll say, well, you know, it's, uh, it's just not something we do. It's, again, it's the devil's holiday. Well, when you say things like that and you don't have any kind of facts to back it up, you look ignorant. And so I want to try to help you out a little bit tonight. I want to try to give you some things that, that further prove what you're saying is right. But when people say, well, I don't believe that, you can say, okay, well, here's some information. So I'm going to try to do three things for you tonight, okay? Number one, I'm going to provide some history on Halloween, where it comes from. Uh, number two, I'm going to get some, some scripture that I think gives the Christian responses that you ought to have, uh, the, the, if you will, the Christian principles, the Bible principles surrounding something like Halloween and what it's about. And thirdly, okay, how do I respond? In light of the scripture, in light of where it comes from, how do I respond? All right? So I'm going to give you some history. I, I go to Ephesians chapter number five, Ephesians 5. And I will encourage you to take notes, because we're going to cover a lot of things historically, um, and, and hopefully give you enough information to, uh, uh, to last you a while on this subject. Ephesians chapter 5, though, and look what it says in verse number 11. Verse 11, it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. All right? You're not to have any part... And the unfruitful works of darkness. Uh, I know that maybe it, it's sort of funny, but <laughs> it, almost every year at work I've been at, I don't know that they did last year. I think up until last year, every year I was asked, what are you going to come dressed like? My first question is, how old are you? My second question is, 
you know. <laughs> My second question is, uh, what do you think I should come dressed like? And they come all these things and say, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do what I, I came as last year. And if someone wasn't here last year, they go, oh, what were you dressed like? I always tell them the same thing, an independent Baptist Bible-thumping preacher, you know. And uh, they go, well, how do you dress for that? Like I am right now, you know. Um, but uh, anyways, minus the purple. Sorry, Brother St. John. I know that was a hard thing to get over. But um, in, 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 uh, in light of this, you're, you're supposed to reprove the unfruitful works of darkness. Halloween is dark, okay? And we're going to look at that. It is a dark, I hate calling it a holiday. Because it's not a, you understand, holiday comes from the root word holy day. There's nothing holy about Halloween. And what's amazing is the word hallow. Hallowed be thy name, Halloween. There's, some, there's a lot of blasphemy involved with this stuff. So um, l- let me give you, again, some, some history behind this. And it began, Halloween began over, I know some of you are going to be sort of bored. I started out doing a slideshow, a PowerPoint presentation, and then I realized I don't want to put visual graphics of this stuff in your mind. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, maybe next year I can be more creative and find a way to do it without getting that. But I started doing this stuff and go, man, I don't want, I don't want this stuff in your head. There's enough of that garbage out there already. I don't want it in their heads, these little kids' heads either. All right? But it, it began over 2,000 years ago among the Celts all right? uh, uh, and, and the pagan priests, which were called the Druids. All right? And uh, let me give you these two things, these two names, Beltane, B-E-L-T-A-N-E, and Samhain, S-A-M-H-A-I-N. All right? Those are two Druid holidays. Basically, they're satanic. All right, Beltane was uh, celebrated on May the 1st. Um, there's a German uh, word for it, Waldpurichsnacht, which is a, uh, a, it's a feast, if you will. It was a celebration started by the Catholic Church, and I'll explain how that comes. How does Halloween, the Catholic Church, have a connection? We're going to talk about that as well, okay? Uh, but basically, Beltane was the birth of summer, Mar- May 1st, all right? Beltane, birth of summer, May 1st. Samhain was the death of summer, November 1st. Now you're probably thinking, okay, if it's November 1st, what are we doing celebrating this whole thing on October 31st? Well, I'll explain that as well. All right? But again, keeping in mind that Sam Hain was a night celebrating the death of summer, the death of a period of life, all right? A lot of the things that were celebrated along with that were wicked, including uh, sacrificing your firstborn children. All right, there were sacrifices of children that were done. Now, I'm going to give you some things that are sort of, I, I'm PGing this thing way down. I'll tell you that much, okay? Uh, but uh, look at Numbers chapter number 3, all right? The, the Celts celebrated the, the, uh, this thing called Samhain, and it was a, a pagan festival, all right? And what they were doing is they were honoring the Lord of the dead. All right, they were Sam, Sam Hain was a time to celebrate to honor the Lord of the dead, the, the God of death, if you will, if you want, if you want to look at it that way. All right, uh, look if you would at Numbers chapter number three, and uh, uh, brother uh, Wayne, if you'd read verse number thirteen, in light of the fact that uh, on the evening of Sam Hain, firstborn children were sacrificed. Now think about it. Why why is that an important thing in the Bible? Firstborn. Brother Wayne, read uh, Numbers 3, verse 13. Because all the firstborn are mine, from the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto thee all the firstborn in Israel. Both man and beast, mine shall they be, I am the Lord. God is the one that should have the firstborn. And there's, Satan is behind this thing. He tries to mimic everything that God does. He tries to mimic and have everything that God has. You know what Satan has? You know what the Lord has? The Lord has a bride. Satan has a bride. All right, you know what the Lord has? He's a trinity. Satan has a trinity. All right, the devil tries to imitate. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is called the morning star. So you know what Lucifer tries to get in the new Bibles? He tries to get that title. He always wants what God has. All right? And uh, basically the idea of this, and, and, and by the way, I want you to get this. I'm not quoting just what a bunch of preachers said. Let me give you some of the resources I've got. Encyclopedia Britannica. You know, that's a real Christian, you know, publication. Encyclopedia Britannica, 2005 on the subject of Halloween. Uh, A book called uh, Holiday Symbols and Customs by a lady named Sue Ellen Thompson. All right? Uh, These are not preachers. All right? These 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 are people that don't believe the Bible, but they're giving historical fact. All right? And so, uh, 
National Geographic, you know, they love God so much and they love the Bible, right? All right? They're the ones that wrote about the evening of Samhain being a time where the firstborn children were sacrificed. It was a night of dread and danger. What was the entire idea? Okay, the entire idea was this. The entire idea was the, the Lord of the dead, the God of death, and the evil spirits would be released on that night, November the 1st. All right? Those, those spirits would come out, and those spirits were looking for a body that they could possess. And so what the people would do is those people would themselves dress up as devils, as demons, as these things. They'd put on costumes and out. Now, like, guys, I'm not against Batman or anything, okay? But they dress like bats. They dress like unclean animals in the Bible. When I say unclean, if you look at the Old Testament and look at what God calls clean and what he calls unclean, one of the things you will find in that list of unclean things is a lot of birds, all right, because in the Bible, they're likened to unclean spirits. All right, when the Lord, after the battle of Armageddon, uh, or, or I'm sorry, before the battle of Armageddon, he talks about mystery Babylon when he comes to destroy that place. And Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah he talks about it, because he says it's become a, a place of the, the owl and the hawk and the bats. And then over there in Revelation, he says it's become the cage of every unclean bird. All right. There's a reason for that, because those birds are a picture of unclean spirits. All right? Now, let me give you some things. I'm, I'm going to pass through some things I'd rather not read uh, in, in mixed uh, company. Uh, uh, but again, I want to give you some ideas to where this stuff comes from. Now, think about this. Uh, Beltane is the beginning of that, of that thing. Samhain is the end. Beltane is basically worshiping uh, the beginning of summer and, and if you will, the... the uh, uh, deities of fertility and of life and all that kind of stuff. But at the beginning of that, Beltane, what does that come from? Think about the name of false gods in the Bible. Can you think of any? Like Baal? All right? Beltane comes from the word Baal. And Beltane means the fires of Baal. And I don't think I have to tell you that the word uh, Baal shows up 80 times in your King James Bible. I don't think I have to tell you that, that, the, that Baal is a false god. And uh, again, Satan wants to mimic. He wants to take everything that belongs to God. And, and think about it like this. Um, if the devil, anything that goes on in our society, guys, anything. I mean, you know, they have, they have websites now where people can register themselves and have accounts so that they can commit adultery with their, on their spouse. They have websites for that. And they make it look classy. They make it look elegant. It's filthy. It's wicked. And, but, but if you dress it up the right way, people will accept it. And people will begin to think that it's normal. And, and so basically what you have, and I understand this, guys. I understand, again, the kids, you know, that are going out, they want candy. That's all they care about. They want to dress up, have fun, get candy, all right? I don't think any kid's thinking, I want to celebrate a pagan druid holiday, all right? I understand that. I also understand this. Whether it's Easter, whether it's, uh, Fourth of July, whether it's Thanksgiving, whether it's Christmas, whether it's Halloween, our society is over commercialized in every aspect, and everything's about selling stuff and making money so the corporations grow larger and all that kind of good stuff. Same thing goes with Halloween. Everywhere you go, it's everywhere. So people naturally, after time goes on, they just see it as a normal thing, all right? And it's every day. It's just like everyday life for them, but. In light of where this stuff comes from, in light of Baal, look at uh, 2 Kings chapter number 17. 2 Kings 17. Uh, some of you may have read a book, you may have heard of a book called The Two Babylons, written by a man named Alexander Hislop. Um, and uh, in that book, he writes about the God whom the Druids worshipped was Baal. And he talks about uh, the children being offered in sacrifice to Baal. 2 Kings 17, look if you would at verse 15. Talking about the nation of Israel. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain. You know what they did? They just did what everybody else did. They didn't think about why they were doing it. They didn't ask themselves, is God for this? They just did it because everybody else around them was doing it. That was the problem with the nation of Israel. That is why they went down. That's why the Lord told the nation of Israel, the kings of that country, not to marry strange women, to marry women outside of their nation. Why? Because they would turn their heart after other gods. They would become like everything around them. And if you study history, guys, 
The nation of Israel really has been a gift to this planet. Really has. You studied us Gentiles. You know what we were all doing? We were all running around the forest or the jungle or something, killing each other and drinking each other's blood. Seriously. If it's, I mean, the nation of Israel is a unique nation where God gave them laws and God gave them things to keep them pure and to keep them right. And, and, the, and, the, and the Bible was published in, in, first in Hebrew and then eventually in Greek and then we got in English. And because of the Bible going out in Western world, we look at the people now in the Middle East chopping everybody's heads off and we go, how barbaric. But if you go back enough centuries, we were all doing that stuff before the Bible came around. The Bible changed our society. And now that the Bible's been closed and people don't know what it says, we're going back into paganism. And a lot of Christians go along with it. I know youth group leaders. They go trick-or-treating with their teens. I'm sorry, I've got, I, I think God has a problem with that. I think the Lord looks at that and says, hey, you're trying to be cool, but you're vain. Right? Uh, look if you would, uh, again, we're reading here. They followed vanity and became vain. And when after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them, that they should not do like them. Right? And what they do, look at verse 16. They left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served who? Baal. Baal. And I'm sure that if you, if you ask the average American that's celebrating Halloween, you know, uh, why are you worshiping Baal? They would say, what are you talking about? All right? Uh, but again, where, the, where this stuff comes from, there's a, there is a connection. That's why I'm telling you, history is important. Some of you might think it's boring, but if you don't understand where stuff comes from, you don't understand how, how, how estranged it is from Scripture. If you don't know that what this comes from is people celebrating death. Now, you ought to be able to look around and go, skeletons, skulls, you know, uh, ghosts, probably leans towards death versus life, right? Um, in light of that, look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Halloween glorifies death. Death is not a friend of yours. And the Lord Jesus Christ came to overcome death. We are not to celebrate death. We've got a society that is hell-bent on, on glorifying death. Yeah. Right? They're, they're, people are now putting things on YouTube of people getting killed and shot and, and decapitated, and people are starting just to get, they're just starting to get uh, uh, numb to all this stuff. And you know what happens when you watch something like that? You've got to watch more. You've got to see the next one. We become so desensitized to what, really what death is. When you ask a young person about death, you know, a lot of times they're so jaded because they've watched so much of it on TV and on the Internet that when you ask them about where they're going when they die, I don't know. You know why? They're jaded. There's no fear. We've got a society that is infatuated with death. There's a problem with that. Let me go a step further, and I, I know that this might step on toes. If you're, you know, our kids are really young, but, man, as they start growing up, uh, you know, you parents of the younger kids, I'm going to give you a healthy warning and take it or leave it. Uh, if you get your kid play video games where all they do is shoot each other and kill each other, I'm sorry, I think you're doing them, I think you're doing them a, a, a disservice. All right? Now you may say, well, it's manly, it's fun. Um, show me the Bible where it's manly to, to glorify death. I didn't say fight for your life and protect your family. I'm talking about glorifying it. they got video games now where people steal cars and they fight the cops. And we're wondering why our society is the way it is. Because our entertainment is against God, guys. It is. All right? So look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy 30. All that was for free. Deuteronomy 30. Look, if you would, at verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death. We read this. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Blessing and cursing. Therefore... Guys, Choose Life is not a slogan for the anti-abortion movement, okay? Choose Life is a Bible phrase. God gave it to the nation of Israel. And He gave it to them as a nation because He knew there was going to come a time, and they'd already been tested with this, where they'd be tested with choosing death over life. Do you understand? Let me, let me go another step further. They are trying to introduce into our state legislature the idea of mercy killings. You say, what does that mean? 
That means that if you get to where you're sick and you no longer feel your life is of value, you can go to a doctor and they just kill you. Guys, there's something wrong with that. We are not valuing life on the beginning end of it or on the other end of it. And, and in between, we've got everybody glorifying it through movies and entertainment, glorifying death. We've got a problem in our society. And the bigger problem is that Christians don't see the problem. We don't see it as that's a problem. We say, as well, what's the big deal if the kid dresses up like a superhero? You know? What's the big deal if... Uh, look, I just, I just don't want our kids even thinking that this is something that's normal or that is good for them. The Druid Vest, uh, Festival of Samhain was a celebration of death. They would take death images of skulls. Guys, where does this stuff come from? Skulls, skeleton, ghosts, demons, devils, and basically just evil incarnate. Now, look, you might say, well, I don't think modern Halloween has anything to do with Baal or the Druids or anything else. Okay. But you can't discount the fact that it has everything to do with glorifying death. Look at, uh, look at Hebrews chapter number uh, 2. Hebrews chapter number 2. Hebrews chapter number 2. I, I, I don't like being, you know, how do I say it? I am an independent Bible-believing uh, Baptist. I try to stay away from the term fundamentalist because there's so many things associated with that anymore that I don't like being associated with. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you one of the things that, that the old-time Baptists had right is they understood there was a good reason to separate yourself from this world. And, and guys, not all separation is pharisaical, okay? Some separation is healthy, some separation is good. And when it comes to this subject, I'll, I'll encourage you, separate yourself. Separate your kids. Tell them it's not good, you know? Uh, I'll never forget, I mean, when, now you know this is true. When you go in public and your kids say, oh, we don't do that, they look at you like you're the biggest evilest monster in the whole, in the whole wide world, don't they? As a parent, like, what's wrong with you, you know? <laughs> You know, and here's, my, here's, here's the thing I do. Let's quote scripture all night. Whoever gets the Bible sword drills right, you get candy. And when someone comes to our door, you know what? Give them some candy, give them a gospel track. But I don't need my kid to go dress up and be around a bunch of death and be around uh, a gl stuff that glorifies death and darkness and celebrate fear like these zombie mazes. I have to admit, there have been times I've wanted to go not to enjoy the zombie stuff, but I've wanted to punch somebody. I just thought it'd be fun. I could probably get away with it because they'd be like, boo, ah, you know, and, and I could probably get away with it. Oh, I'm sorry, you scared me, you know. But I have, I have abstained myself. I came pretty close. There's one down in Parker. I almost did it. But um, you don't have to take your kids to a zombie run to have a good time with them. You don't got to go that way, all right? Uh, I, again, I'm, I think God's a God of replacement. Uh, I don't think you have to celebrate the holiday. At the same time, uh, I, I would say this, you know what, on November 1st, all that Halloween candy goes on sale, <laughs> right? You want to get candy, get it then, all right? Uh, but uh, look at Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews 2. We're talking about death and how it's glorified. I want to show you something. Hebrews 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Talk about Jesus Christ. Talking about him being a man in flesh and blood. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Who is that? That is the devil. The devil is the one that associates himself with the power of death. Not the Lord. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The Lord came to bring us life and uh, give it to us more abundantly. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Death is our enemy. Now you say, well, you know, when I die, I'll be free and I go home to heaven. Yes, I understand that. But as far as sickness and sorrow and basically the decline of the human body, uh, what, what sin did to us is associated with death. God doesn't want us celebrating death. Look at 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is what? Is death. Why would you celebrate a holiday that glorifies it? God says, it's my enemy. Hey, here's what I know. Here's what I know. If I'm friends with uh, Brother Wayne, and you're his enemy, 
All right, I don't mean you guys had a disagreement, you guys don't like each other, and you guys aren't friends on Facebook. And, all right, that's not what I mean by that, all right? I mean you're his enemy, and you hate him, and you hate his family. Guess what? You're not going to be my friend. You're not. Sorry. If there's someone that is against you people in this church, as your pastor, they're not my, I'll reach out and minister to them, want to see them get saved. But as far as them being my friend, they're not my friend. You're my friend. Something, guys, I'll say this too. I know some churches and some pastors take the idea of loyalty and they've made it such a mess because they say it's all about being loyal to me. You better follow me. I understand that. But there's something to be said about loyalty. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, you should be loyal to your spouse. You ought to be loyal to your church. You ought to be loyal to your pastor. Yes, I said it. You ought to be. And I should be to you. It goes both ways. All right? But the point is, there's nothing wrong with that. Loyalty is a good thing. You ought to be loyal first and foremost to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if somebody, if God says, death is my enemy and it's your enemy, guess what? Stay away from it. Shouldn't glorify it. Shouldn't celebrate it. All right? Now, here's a question. How did it go from being this big pagan thing about, you know, by the way, the jack-o'-lanterns, all that stuff comes from people, <laughs> their heads getting chopped off and being put on a stake, all right? That's where all that comes from, the jack-o'-lantern thing. Uh, but how did it go from that, blood sacrifices, uh, things I won't even mention in mixed company, how did it go from all of that to what it is today? Well, uh, let me put it to you this way. Um, my history of, of the Latin America countries, uh, South America, you know basically what it was? The, uh, the Catholic Church came and said, okay, you've got two choices. You either accept our religion or you die. <laughs> so everybody goes, oh, I think I want to become a Catholic. You know, <laughs> it's amazing. I feel led by the Spirit all of a sudden, you know. Um, and so what they did, though, when they went to these places where the people had these customs, where they celebrated a night of death, is they said, okay, okay, you know what? Let's be done with, like, killing each other and drinking the blood and all that kind of stuff. But you guys can keep the day. We're just going to call it All Hallows Day. We'll call November 1st All Souls Day, where instead of the souls coming to possess a body, it'll be about souls that were in purgatory that have been released. Okay? And so, so it changed. All right? Just like they said, okay, in the early Roman Empire, after Constantine had his vision of the cross in the sky in this name conquer, all right, in this sign conquer, all right, after that happened, he said, okay, it's no longer called Jupiter, now it's God. It's no longer called uh, this person, now it's, and that's no longer Venus, now it's Mary. You just changed the names of the former things. That's all you did. All right? And so what they did is they came up with this idea of uh, uh, All Souls Day, which is on November 1st. And then October 31st was the eve of All Saints Day, or the eve of what they call All Hallows Day. Hallow is connected with the word holy. Now in Mexico and in some South American countries, they celebrate what they call the Day of the Dead. Anybody ever heard of that? On November 1st, what they do is they, people will go on October 31st, and they'll go to the graves, and they'll take, I mean, I remember this in Bolivia, these people have nothing. <laughs> and they spend a good amount of money with no money coming in, very little money that they have, and they spend a decent amount of money on flowers, on food. I'm talking good food. I'm going by the grave thinking, I could eat that. You know, that looks really good. And they, and they've, they put all this stuff out there. Uh, you're talking in some cases upward of 50 bucks, which is a lot of money for a Bolivian. And that's about uh, 500 Bolivianos right now. They, they put all that out there because why? Because the souls of their loved ones who are buried there that may be released from purgatory want to come and enjoy a feast with them and then they'll be connected with them. It's all a bunch of pagan stuff, guys. But they renamed it. And so All Hallows Day, which is the eve, uh, the eve of All Hallows Day, Hallow Eve, Halloween is what it was in the, in the Irish uh, languages, Hall became Halloween. Now, most people don't understand that that's, you know, the Catholic Church got involved and sort of bridged the gap there. But I want you to think about this. Look at Matthew chapter number 6. The very name of Halloween is a blasphemous name. You say, why? Because there's only one person that deserves the title of holy. You know why God has a problem with the man walking around on planet Earth talking about cleaning up the environment and giving money to the poor and taking it from you folks in America and giving it to the folks in South America? You know why God has a problem with that? Because that same guy, that same guy, 
calls himself Holy Father. And the only person that ought to have that title is the Lord. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and look at verse number 9. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye our Father which art in heaven. Look at this. Hallowed. Hallowed. Be that name. What is it? Holy. His name is holy. All right? And uh, this thing is blasphemous. You say, what is it? It goes back to Isaiah 14. I'll be like the Most High, Lucifer. He wants the glory and the honor that goes to God. And so I know what you're probably thinking. Okay, well, if these people don't know that this is where this comes from and they have no idea, just because people don't know they're going to hell when they die doesn't mean they're not going. Just because people don't see the, the, the depravity in adultery doesn't mean it's depraved. Just because people don't see the problem in hanging out at a nightclub and getting smashed and forgetting what you did that, at, that, you know, the next day doesn't mean God doesn't have a problem with it. And it doesn't mean that it's not a place where Satan gets glory because he does. So what you have is you have a bunch of kids who don't, they don't know any better. They're just being kids. They want candy. They want to dress up. It's fun for them. All right? And I say this. Sit up. I say this, cut the kids some slack. It's the parents that need to be <laughs> examined, you know. Uh, but uh, all that said, I, we'll get to this, but we'll, use it as an opportunity to witness to them. You know? And I'll say, let me go a step further. I'm probably getting ahead of myself. Don't, unless someone has asked you why you don't celebrate it, all right, you don't have to go out of your way to make that the point. That is not a witness. You're not witnessing when you, de when you devour someone's time of fun, Okay. You can tell them the truth if they ask about it. My thought is this. Just give them the gospel. If someone asked me, I'd say, look, because it celebrates death. And I don't know about you, but I like life a whole lot. Amen. Amen. And my God came to bring life and to give it more abundantly. That's why I don't celebrate it. All right? But I want to give you some things to consider. Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan and the author of the Satanic Bible, he's not exactly a friend of Bible-believing preachers. All right, he's not coming at this from a Christian standpoint. After one's own birthday, the two major satanic... Now, think about that. I don't have a problem with birthdays, but that is interesting. That's a big part of the satanic church. All I can get out of it is it's all about me. Watch out for me and I and I and me. Amen? All right, the two major satanic holidays are Walpurgisnacht, all right, May 1st, and Halloween. They say it's a major satanic holiday. I'll take it at face value. That's coming from the Church of Satan. Right? If you, you know, it'd be like me saying this. Um, well, if you want to learn about what the LDS Church believes, maybe read what an LDS prophet says. Right? So if the Church of Satan's leader says, hey, Halloween is one of our big nights, probably true. Probably a good idea to stay away from it as well. Now, again... That's some of the history. I don't want to continue going on. There's things about jack-o'-lanterns and where all that comes from. I won't, uh, won't go too much into that. Uh, the idea of costumes and where that comes from, the idea was this, if you're curious. All right, I'll just give you this, if you want to know, okay? Uh, sorry, you're going to know anyways. All right, if you don't want to know, too bad. Tune me out. The jack-o'-lantern thing I already talked about, the costumes, the idea, it has a long history in the occult and demon possession, Masks are used to contact the spirit world. Now, I don't think for a second that a kid wearing a Spider-Man you know, costume is somehow tapping into hell. Okay, I didn't say that. I don't think that. But where it comes from. So people that actually are involved in the occult, when they get into doing the stuff that they do, they use some of these things. And so my point is this. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. <laughs> I think the best illustration I have for this is, I think I was in Tennessee. I, I, I'm pretty sure I was door knocking in Tennessee. Sometimes my memory just blurs together. It, it could have been in Florida. Um, but I remember one time I was door knocking, and a lady came to the door in her towel. Just got out of the shower. And he's talking about, ah, word. And it was me and this guy, and we're like, oh, hey, you know, we're from this church, but... Uh, we can come another time. She says, oh no, you can come in. I'm like, oh no, you gotta, you gotta get ready to do what you need to do. We'll, we'll come back some other time. She didn't think anything of it, <laughs> which is beyond me, you know. But would I have been wrong to, in myself? Would I have sinned if I gone and given the gospel and left? Is there sin in that? 
Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Even if I did nothing wrong, look at verse 22. It doesn't say to abstain from evil. It says abstain from all appearance of evil. And so just because the kid is innocent, you know he's not like tapping into the, you know, the spirit world because he's got a, a Superman costume on or anything like that. I know that. I get that. And you ought to get that as well. Please don't tell people they're tapping into the spirit world because they put a costume on, okay? Just because they're not doing it doesn't mean that we should allow our kids to be involved in that. There's an appearance of evil. If you know where this stuff comes from, there's an appearance of evil. All right? I'll also say this, and I don't, I don't understand it. You know, I, get, I, I, I try, but I don't get it. There's a lot of things I don't understand. Some of you guys are going to think I'm an old soul. I try to hang out with guys and play video games. I just get bored with it. I do. I just get bored. I want to go do something else. I know some of you are going to judge me right now because you enjoy that. I'm sorry. All right? There are some things I don't get. I don't get... There's probably some things you don't get about me. I'm sure that's okay. But when it comes to the Halloween side, I don't get adults wanting to dress up. I'll tell you another thing that I don't get. I don't understand this for the life of me. It becomes an excuse for women to dress slutty. I'm sorry. I just said that. Okay? But it's the truth. They wear these skimpy outfits, the, the nurse outfits. It would not be acceptable for you to go to work like that any other day of the year, but somehow today it's okay. Not acceptable. Especially not for a Christian. All right? Now, I know some of you may have a problem with me saying what I just said. You watch way worse. You've heard way worse on regular TV. So just bear with me. Have some grace with me, okay? All right? The point is, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that's acceptable on that night that's not acceptable any other day. Why is that? All right? Now, I want to give you some, some scripture, I believe, that helps address what we're dealing with. All right? Uh, look, if you would, at Leviticus chapter number 20. Leviticus chapter number 20. Now, I know what you're going to say. This is Old Testament. Very true. And just because we don't necessarily, as a society, because we are not a theocracy, all right, we are not a nation where God is our king, as the nation of Israel had, all right, we don't necessarily execute these laws the same way, but it, it, it does at least show you where God is at concerning these things. Shows you what God thinks about these things. Leviticus chapter number 20, look at verse 27. A man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them. Don't misunderstand me. I didn't say you stone people because they believe in, you know, being in witchcraft. Right? They're, they're involved in witchcraft. I didn't say that. But I'll tell you this much. God told his nation to do that because that's how seriously he took this subject. So if that's how seriously he took it, we ought to take it seriously as well. All right? Look, if you would, at Exodus chapter number 22. Exodus 22. Exodus 22. Exodus 22, verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch... To live. Alright? Now that's not Bible proof for devouring your sand witch. Okay? Alright? He's talking about uh, lots, of, lots of head shaking right now. Okay? But obviously he's, he's not, and I know our cartoons have made us think that a witch is like a green faced lady with a wart. And, um, but there's a lot of witchcraft involved in the New Age movement. Uh, there's the black magic side of things. Understand that New Age, white, what they call white magic, it's still de devilish and demonic. Okay, um, it, it is different. There are characteristics that they themselves look at each other and say we're not the same, but their God is the same God ultimately. All right, um, but God said, "Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live." They shouldn't live. Now, again, that shows you God's attitude. I'm not saying you go kill someone that says they're a witch. I met a gal here about a year and a half ago. We were street preaching. And her dad was actually the pastor of, or one of the pastors, starting pastors of that church, the vineyard. Her dad was, and she was a professing witch that believed, no longer believed in the Bible. And Ariana was with me that night. We talked to her at the bus stop. We had a great conversation with her. All right? Um, so am I saying go kill her? No. What I'm saying is God took it so seriously, though. You've got to understand, this is not a joke with the Lord. It's not cute. There's nothing cute about it to God. God sees it as a society has been deceived into accepting 
and glorifying and celebrating death and things that are against him. All right? Uh, look at Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians 5. You guys remember that Saul died for his transgression because he asked counsel of one that had a familiar spirit. All right, that's dealing, a familiar spirit, if you're, not, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with what it means to have a familiar spirit, a familiar spirit is the, appar- it's the appearance of somebody that you know. That's why it's called a familiar spirit. Like, in other words, when people can call someone back from the dead, all right, you're dealing with an unclean spirit. All right? It's a familiar spirit. All right, look if you would at Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians 5. And we'll round this out here in the next five minutes. We're almost done. Trying to load your wagon as far as where we stand on this and why. Ephesians chapter number 5. You know, there's going to be some... I, I read quite a bit online about Christians who defend celebrating Halloween. Uh, I read a lot uh, of, about churches and youth groups that say, you know, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, you know, legalistic Christians that think we shouldn't celebrate this. And, you know, as long as you... Uh, uh, as long as you, you know, understand that you're not uh, in bondage to Satan and that kind of stuff, uh, I, I, I don't think that's the right approach, guys. I don't. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, look at verse number 11. We read this before. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of what? Darkness. Guys, it's all about darkness. They don't want, think about the whole thing. Trick-or-treating is typically at night, all right? The whole entire, I could even talk about where that idea of trick-or-treating comes from, right? I won't go into that. All right, but it's not good. I'll leave it there, all right? Um, and uh, it says here, it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You know, I'll, I'll tell you this much. There are some things we joke about sometimes we probably shouldn't joke about. I'll give you an example about alternative lifestyles. We make fun of it and joke. Sometimes it's just, it's not, it's not joke would matter. It's not funny. He says, the Lord says, it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. Look, God is constantly trying to draw a line between death and life, darkness and light. And everything about this quote-unquote holiday is death and darkness. All right? Uh, look what he says in verse 15. See then ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In other words, if you see that something is connected with something else, don't go along with it. Don't go along with it. Look at Romans chapter 14. Romans 14. You can say, well, I have liberty to celebrate this day because, you know, one man is seen with one day above another and so on and so forth. That, that'd be like me saying you have liberty to worship a false idol because you know after all, when you bow, you can, you can bow, why not bow? I mean, you know it's not really a God, Right? So it's okay if you bow. You're just having a good time. No, you, don't, you shouldn't have liberty to do that. All right? Uh, Romans 14. And let me, go, let me just say this. I'll get this out of the way. There are, some, there are some Christians that don't celebrate Christmas. You should not castigate somebody for not celebrating Christmas. Can I get that out of the way? Some people do, and it's not right. If someone doesn't celebrate Christmas or someone doesn't celebrate Easter, they don't want to call Easter, hey, man, back off. There's a reason they don't want to do that. All right? Now, on the flip side, if you, as a Christian, I, I think if you celebrate Christmas, myself, I, don't, I think you have liberty to do it. You say, why Christmas and why not Halloween? Well, one celebrating the birth, one I can look at and say, here's what I'm doing with this. I'm talking about the birth of my Savior. I can't even pull at straws to do that with Halloween. Sorry, can't do it. All right, Romans 14, look if you would at uh, Romans 14. One of my best friends in the world, a guy named Ricky Dunham, they didn't celebrate Christmas. They didn't celebrate Valentine's Day, and there was a lot of things they didn't celebrate. And we're the best of friends. And you know what? I'm, a, I'm that guy that started to play Christmas music in October. <laughs> and me and him were friends. You know why? Because we could have grace with one another. And just because we didn't see everything eye to eye in that subject, we were okay. This thing about Halloween is a different animal. There, there is nothing with light. There is nothing with life associated with it. It's all death and darkness. Look at Romans 14, and look, if you would, at verse number 16. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. That goes along with the idea of uh, abstaining from all appearance of evil. Ephesians 4.27, if you're taking notes, says, Neither give place to the devil. And guys, I'm sorry, but if you know where this stuff comes from and what it glorifies, you're giving place to the devil. And here's what's going to happen for 
parents that have younger ones, you're going to have that pressure from family. You're going to have people saying, why are you like this? You're weird. You know, and, and instead of, I'll say this, instead of always presenting it as you're against them, show them what you're for. Amen. What, what I mean by that is, no, I'm against it. Okay, well, tell me what you got. What do you got? Tell me what you got. Instead of me saying, well, I, I don't say, when people ask me, well, your kids need to go out? No, they're, they're not going to go out. You say, well, why not? Well, we, we really have a much more, we have a lovely time as a family. We'll stay home, we'll play games. When people come to the door, the kids love giving them candy and gospel tracts. You guys ever seen, you ever seen a gospel tract before? It's one of these. Bam! Right? That's how you get that done. Instead of saying, well, I'm against it, it's the devil's holiday, and you give them all this stuff, and they're going, you're just weird. <laughs> all right? You know why I can talk to you about this stuff and give you a history on it? I know who I'm talking to. I know who I'm talking to. I wouldn't go to work and unload all this stuff on most people. They just think I'm crazy. They think I'm talking about UFOs and stuff like that. They, don't, they won't get it. They'll think I'm just some nutty preacher. But I, I'll, I'll give you it because I want you to know why we're in this position, why we take this posi position on this thing. Now, I talked to you about the history, talked to you about some scripture surrounding the principles of why what not to be involved in it. Again, talking about the reaction to it, I think I already hinted at this quite a bit. Use it as an opportunity. Uh, think about what it's connected with. This time of year is connected with the harvest. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Now, and I don't say this to, to man, to, to drive this into people or to beat people up. Uh, I say this because it's, it's very true. All right? If you have a, a celebration, you have a bunch of fun and games, you can easily get 50, 60 people to show up. When it's time for some soul winning efforts, not usually that much. Can I say this? Take advantage of this time of year. Take advantage of Saturday. Now look, if you're the person that says, we're turning the lights off, we're not answering the door, okay, fine. That's your business, okay? But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some candy, all right? I'm not probably going to eat it, not all anyways, all right? I'll get some candy, gummy bears especially. It's been a while since we've had gummy bears around here, by the way. Um, but I'm going to get some, some candy, and when people come to the door, I'm going to give them some candy. And I'm giving some gospel tracts. I may have to come to Aurora to hang out with one of you guys. <laughs> no one comes to our door, you know. Uh, every once in a while you have a farmer and a pitchfork come by, and that's about it. All right? But, uh, you know, seriously, get some gospel tracts. All right? And I'm going to make a suggestion. Um, be particular about which ones you pass out. I'm going to go a step further. If you let me have liberty, there are some chick tracts that should not be given to little kids. I'm serious, all right? Now, we have them here because you can deal with a wide variety of people in your daily life. But just because it's a Halloween track, read it through first. And just think about it like this. If I'm a lost parent and my kid goes to this door and this is the track that I have to read with my child, would I rather it be about the roots of Halloween or would I rather it be about the gospel of Jesus Christ? So... Keep that in mind as well, okay? I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying have some discernment about who you give things to. But use it as an opportunity. Look at Jude. We'll close with this. Jude. You know where this world is? This world is this weekend they're going to celebrate a lot of death and really things that have to do with hell. And our job, our role in this thing, well, as you, as you turn to Jude, let me, let me say this. Paul, when he's uh, talking about the... Uh, He's dealing with the uh, people there at, at uh, Mars Hill, the Athenians. You know what he does? He quotes one of their poets. He tries to relate with them. And he points out, out how one of their poets said something that can connect to a spiritual principle. So you know what that shows me? He used something in the culture to get the people to understand who the Lord was. Do that yourself. That is not compromise, all right? That is taking advantage of the opportunities you have in front of you to give the people the gospel. All right? Jude, verse 23. I'm sorry, verse 22. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. That's what you ought to do this year. That's what I do every day of your life. Amen? But when it comes to this, this uh, celebration that goes on at this time of year, understand most people are deceived. They don't get it. And keep the main thing the main thing. 
I don't know. Maybe you do. I said something like this recently, and I, I you know, uh, hurt somebody's feelings by saying, I don't know when they ever, ever got saved at this kind of event. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. Maybe out there someone exists like this. I don't know any saved Christians who got saved because someone told them about the evils of Halloween. There may be. There may be. There may very well be. But I can tell you I know a lot more people that were that came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because someone just shared the gospel with them. So do that. Do that this time of year. Amen? Take advantage of it. All right. We'll go ahead and close the word of prayer. More of a a study, more of a, a history lesson, if you will. Uh, but I do hope that as families, we're drawing a real clear line about where we're at and where the world is at on these things. All right, we'll close in a word of prayer. Brother Wayne, if you would, close us out. And if I could borrow Brother Wayne, Brother Joel, Brother St. John after church for a few minutes, I'd appreciate it. Brother Wayne, if you would.